Hello class, this is Pei Zhang. This is our first presentation for the intermediate course for translation. I grew up in mainland China and later studied and worked in Japan, France, Germany, and the States. Apart from medicine and science, I'm also interested in languages. I've always worked part-time as a medical translator or interpreter. Now I'm a national board certified medical interpreter in Mandarin, and I'm honored to work for Meteo because I think Dr. Li and my colleagues are truly contributing to something great here. I believe medical translation and interpretation can tremendously enhance effective communication and help those in need. And I hope by sharing my experiences with you, we can learn things from each other and improve our skills together. So we will be covering the specifics of medical translation in this presentation. And I will be taking the context for this presentation from the book Translation Practices Explained, Medical Translation Step-by-Step, -step, Learning by Drafting. Authors are Vincent Montalt Resurrexio and Maria Gonzalez Davis. Medical translation shares many features with other types of translation. As in screen, legal, or literacy translation, it is a professional activity determined by the assignment. It involves adaptation of cultural differences. Medical translators also make use of technological tools, such as translation memories and electronic dictionaries. Their main purpose is also to facilitate communication between different linguistic communities, and so forth. Now, though, let us turn specifically to medical translation and consider what distinguishes it from other types of translation. Medical Specialties Medical translation involves communication of knowledge generated and needed in various specialties, including, among many others, internal medicine, the diagnosis and treatment of cancer, infections and diseases affecting the heart, blood, kidneys, joints, and digestive, respiratory, and vascular systems, disease prevention, substance abuse, and treatment of problems of the eyes, ears, skin, nervous system, and reproductive organs. Obstetrics and gynecology, the medical and surgical care of the female reproductive system and associate disorders. Orthopedics, preservation, investigation, and restoration of the form and function of the extremities, spines, and associated structures. Musculoskeletal problems, including congenital deformities, trauma, infections, tumors, metabolic disturbances of the musculoskeletal system, Deformities, injuries, and degenerative diseases of the spine, hands, feet, knee, hip, shoulder, and elbow. Pediatrics, diagnosis and treatment of infections, injuries, genetic defects, malignancies, and many types of organic disease and dysfunctions in children. Psychiatry, prevention, diagnosis, and treatment of mental, addictive, and emotional disorders such as schizophrenia and other psychotic disorders mood, anxiety, substance-related sexual and gender identity and adjustment disorders. Surgery, preoperative, operative and postoperative care for a broad spectrum of surgical conditions affecting almost any part of the body. Pharmacology, drug composition, mechanisms of drug action, therapeutic use of drugs. When translating medical texts, we may also have to deal with knowledge from anthropology, psychology, sociology, economics, and law, among many other disciplines. Comprehension of medical notions. Factual comprehension is a key element in any translation process, being relevant not only for the translator as reader of the source text, but also for the reader of the target text. However, the priorities are different in medical translation. Whereas the literary translator's main focus is normally on aspects such as register, rhythm, puns, character's attitude, or cultural references, the medical translator's priority is to deal adequately with factual complexity and accuracy. Gaps in the translator's medical knowledge of the different specialties often give rise to comprehension problems. This lack of previous knowledge can be overcome with the help of a range of strategies for acquiring medical knowledge. What is essential is that a broad understanding of the fundamentals and a knowledge of how to acquire in most efficient manner an understanding of other elements as and when necessary. We will focus in other courses in our program on specific medical terminologies and anatomy physiology. I highly recommend all of you to take one of those courses. 
medical terminology. Terms for anatomical parts, diseases, syndromes, drugs, medical equipment, and so forth are specific to medical translation. Becoming familiar with the particular terminology in the languages involved and being able to solve all sorts of terminological problems, neologisms, synonyms, polysemy, register mismatches are not only central activities in medical translation, but key aspects in the lifelong education of professional translators. It should be noted that in the translation process, more than half of the time is invested in detecting and solving terminological problems. Medical Communicative Situations The range of communicative situations where medical translations may be required is very broad, covering not only communication among researchers, but also any kind of communicative interactions about health that involves health professionals, patients, and the general public. Among the main communicative functions of medical translation are the following. The dissemination of biomedical research among specialists the dissemination of the most relevant research in the mass media, the education of health professionals at universities, the education of patients, the approval of new drugs, the regulation of all kinds of health products, the advertising of health products and services, the communication in hospitals and other health centers, the campaigns carried out by health institutions in the national and international context, such as the World Health Organization and so forth. Medical communicative situations are normally found in the following sectors, biomedical research, health services, pharmaceutical laboratories, publishers in the health sciences, governmental health organizations, non-governmental health organizations, mass media specializing in health matters and so forth. Medical genres. Medical translation covers a wide spectrum of genres, from research articles published in highly specialized journals to clinical guide for physicians, textbooks for university students, patient information brochures, press releases, and TV documentaries about health. From a professional point of view, it should be stressed that medical translation is not restricted to highly specialized genres, but also includes more general ones and we will be focused on these in other parts of our presentation. Medical information sources. Professional translators in the health sectors are in constant need of up-to-date sources of medical information of all kinds. Explanations of concepts, including pictures, drawings, films and animations, specialized definitions, lists of terms in different languages, nomenclatures, classifications of diseases, lists of drugs with non-proprietary names, trade names, and national names, texts belonging to the broad spectrum of medical genres, medical databases, health directories, online professional forums, information about the clients, information about writing and document style, and so forth. Research for printed, electronic, and personal sources is a key feature in medical translation for two reasons. First, the translator may not have enough factual knowledge to understand the source text. And second, the translator may have insufficient terminological and phraseological information, as well as inadequate familiarity with target genre conventions to write the target text in an acceptable way. Quality of medical texts. When translating poems, novels, plays, or film scripts, there's no doubt that the authors of the source text are skilled writers, the same cannot always be said when dealing with medical text. More often than not, medical authors are not professional writers. Besides, not all authors of texts about health write in their mother tongue. This means that translators sometimes have to cope with poor quality source texts. There's yet a further consideration. Not all source texts received as assignments are finished, ready to publish texts. Some are written to be used internally and less care is taken in their finished structure and form, while in others, authors may implicitly or explicitly rely on translators to revise and edit the source text before writing it in another language. Clearly, then, there are times when translators should not always rely on the quality of the original when taking decisions about the coherence and style of the translation. Medical Ethics Medical translation is often affected by medical ethics and responsibility. 
One of the most important ethical norms, both in medicine and medical translation, is to act with knowledge and skill, since the health or even the lives of patients are often at stake. Hence, the critical importance of accuracy and validity of information. Another equally important ethical value in medical translation practice is confidentiality. Medical translators must respect the privacy of patient histories, informed consents, drug development documentation, and medical patents, among other genres. Finally, medical translators should promote understanding, respect, and empathy towards disabled people, towards patients' different sensitivity as far as their diseases are concerned. And towards different cultural views on health and disease. Thus, ethical priorities differ in different communicative situations. The following content shows how ethical priorities differ in different genres and demand different skills from the translators. For example, if we have an informed consent genre, the priority is to have clarity so that the patient can make a conscious choice. If it's an original article, the priority is accuracy, so that the experiments can be repeated and the argumentation can be followed in detail. If it's a patient information leaflet, clarity is important, so that the patient can take the drug in a safe and effective way. If it's a questionnaire, the cultural relevance is priority, so that the questions are meaningful for patients in the target culture. If it's a clinical history genre. Priority is on confidentiality, so as to protect the patient's rights of privacy. Completeness and accuracy are also important, so that the health professionals in other locations have easy access to the history of the patient. It is also the case that clinical histories can be used as evidence in order to prove clinical negligence of physicians or institutions. Lastly, health campaign: respect and empathy towards specific groups of patients. Disabled people and members of ethnic minorities is the priority.